Hello everyone welcome to my bold and beautiful now channel. As always, this time I have appeared with the mysterious soap opera. So don't delay like and subscribe now and stay tuned. RJ confronts Zend about his night with Luna at the sand house, Luna blubbed. About her remorse and about her love for R.J. You and Zend, he hurtfully responded. Luna epitomized what had happened at the party when she would drunk and taken anesthetized mints. She claimed that she would seen R.J, but it had actually been Zend. Upset, R.J questioned whether Zend had not seen how out of it Luna had been. He picked that Zend had taken advantage of her. Luna replied that it had not been like that. Either you knew what was passing, or you didn't. Which is it, Luna? RJ asked. Asked if Luna had been passed out. Luna replied that she had not passed out, but she would been confused. R.J. Claimed Zend had taken advantage. Luna refocused out that Zend had not known she would been cured, and neither had R.J, who she believed wouldn't have let her go home alone if he would suspected that. Noted that she had not gone home. Rather, she would gone to the guesthouse. R.J. Asked why. Luna said it had not been to find Zend, and he would miss knew why she would been there. R.J. Suggested that there had been no misreading, and Zend had been after her for months, no way esteeming R.J., Luna, or their relationship. R.J. Told her not to lie to him and say it had been an accident. She cried that it was the verity. It killed her to see her. J. In pain, but she demanded him to hear that Zend had not taken advantage of her, it had been the mints that had made her see her. J, the person she loved. Luna reasoned that she should have gone toward. J. After it had happened. He smelled out that she would been hiding it from him the whole time. She cried that she would stress what it could do to his and Zend's relationship. She called it a big misreading. R. J. Figured that it had been for her, but Zend had known what he would been doing and with whom he would been doing it. R. J. Seized his keys and paraded out of the house. She screamed his name, but he slammed the door. In the design office, Zen told Carter that Luna was confessing Tor. J. At that moment, Zend had really allowed. He and Luna had participated commodity special, and he stated that if it had not been for Poppy and her mints, he and Luna might have had a chance at commodity. Poppy arrived, looking for her son. Zend informed her that Luna was with R.J. and was telling him about her night with Zend. Poppy learned that Zend had commended in Carter and noted that she would told Luna to confess Tor.J. Zen told Poppy that Poppy had told Luna to confess after she would told Luna to keep silent for weeks. Poppy developed that it had been because she would seen how the secret had been destroying Luna. Zen said Luna's first instinct had been to tell the verity, but they'd advised her about the consequences. Carter said R.J. Could not condemn Luna. Zen stated that they could hope for that, still, indeed IFR.J's head got it, his heart might not, and a blindsided R.J. Might be unfit to forgive Luna. Poppy admitted that she should be paying for it, not Luna. Poppy had desisted taking the mints, and Zen asked how that would help Luna. Poppy replied that it might help her and her son get near again. Carter asked if Poppy was quitting for herself or to win Luna back. Poppy stated that she had to be fully present for Luna. Poppy had devoted her life to Luna. Poppy believed that nothing was more important than the well-being of her of her child, but Luna could be losing the man she loved because of Poppy. Latterly, Zend was alone. He allowed. About textbook messaging Luna but changed his mind. R.J. Stormed in, crying names and hurling allegations. Zend told R.J to condemn him, not Luna. Damn right, I condemn you. RJ bellowed and struck Zen to the ground. Back at the sand house, Poppy arrived and discovered Luna crying. Luna said she would been calling R.J. Luna was worried about causing R.J. So important pain, but Poppy claimed that it was her fault. Luna took responsibility for not telling R.J., and she was hysterical of R.J. Defying Zend. 
In Eric's office, Liam and Hope joked about how long the hippos had stayed beneath the water and how lovable Beth had been when the beast had eventually swum up for air. Hope thanked him for taking the time to make it be with Hope. Liam replied that he would take in a lot of effects in his life for granted, but Beth would no way be one of those effects. Liam decided to let Hope get back to work, but Hope said that there was no rush. Liam assumed that was because her lead developer had gone. Hope replied that Thomas had been further to her than just that. She participated that she would been allowing a lot about the elaboration of her relationship with Thomas, and Liam wondered if he was really the bone. For her to entrust in. Hope stated that she was trying to see the bigger picture, since she was more removed from it. She'd been pondering how it had evolved, and she would been allowing of her relationship with Thomas, before he would changed. His involvement in what happened to Beth? Liam asked. Hope stated that she would no way deny that Thomas had prevaricated to them and tried to keep their son from them, but she claimed that Thomas rooted and that it visited Thomas. While she got that Liam could not forgive Thomas, she had, and she would believe that he would been able of changing for the better, which he would done. Hope stated that she was questioning her incapability to accept his offer, and she was not sure what the future held for her and Thomas. Hope said she would been questioning everything. Liam replied that the Joe she would been defending had skipped city because she had not committed presto enough. She stated that she would been questioning why she had not been suitable to commit and noted that effects had been going so well. Hope recalled what Brooke had said upon seeing the ring on the choker for the first time. Brooke had said Hope's involvement with Thomas had been a response. Hope had disregarded it until Finn had mentioned that she might have been revolting. Against what? Liam asked. Hope figured he knew her mama's history and the marker put on Brooke. Hope had sworn she wouldn't be like that. So that when I did start to feel a pull to someone differently, someone who was loyal, probative, a one-woman man, Liam, just know I was not trying to hurt you, Hope stated. Liam replied that he knew it. Claiming that she was not hysterical to admit when she was wrong, Hope concluded that she had not come her mama, but she had dared to walk on the wild side. She had played with fire, but she had not set out to hurt Liam. She claimed she had not been toying with Thomas or trying to use him. She asserted that if she was certain of one thing, it was her passions for Thomas. Hope figured that Liam did not want to hear it, but she did love Thomas. She added that she wanted to concentrate on Beth, and also myself.